up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And I am on my way from school to my house, and I'm gonna train legs tonight. I'm excited about that because I haven't been able to train legs heavy for a while. The guest posing in between, you know. Even if it's a guest posing, you pretty much treat the week before the guest posing as a peak week. Um, you know, less water, more carbs, and not training legs for at least five to six days before the show. So that's exactly what I did. So tonight is a hamstring day. I intend to go heavy and hard. And the website www.vintagegenetics.com is going great as well. It's going amazing. We're selling a lot of items. I'm very happy about that, guys. Uh, we're already ordered more items, more different items as well, to fill up the store even more and to fill up the inventory. And uh, you know, it's all new to me, but it's going pretty well. Everything is working efficiently. So let me know what you think, uh, if you're interested, of the website and, uh, and everything around it. So, because, you know, with your feedback, I am able to improve upon anything on this channel. That's what I've been doing for a long time. I've been listening to what you guys have to say. If you have a comment or you don't like something or you do like something, I make sure that I implement it into the vintage genetics world structure. So, yeah, I'm on my way home, about one hour drive, and I'm actually eating some bread right here. There's a mackerel in between here, a nice, healthy uh, meal, because there's fats in the mackerel, healthy fats, omega-3 protein, the bread itself is gluten-free. Uh, personally, I like it more because I know that it won't upset my stomach. Some grains uh, are a little too acidic for people, and the gluten, the combination of it, upsets this stomach and bloats you up. And I'll always have a backup in my car. Um, basically, I'm driving uh, about one hour and uh, 15 minutes to school and back to school, so we always have something like this, a protein bar. Uh, this one has 50 grams of protein and it's a 100 gram bar, so it has about half of the bar is protein. Now it's not the ideal choice, but it's a backup that you can have in your car. And uh, this is for Cytec Nutrition, and Cytec also has chewable BCAAs actually, so instead of being in a capsule that you have to swallow, you can chew it. And they have golden apple and grapefruit flavors. I tried them out. It's not, it does, it looks like candy. It doesn't taste like candy. It's a bit chalky, but you know, it's, it's, it's quite nice to be able to do. So you can also have a bag of that in your car as a backup. You never know. Uh, how long you might be traveling if you're in a traffic jam like I am a lot <clears throat> or uh, if you can't find the right uh, foods if you didn't pack enough food but always number one is healthy food of course just pack all your meals always bring a backup meal but sometimes as I said in the off season I like something like this this is uh, dark chocolate caramel flavor and it's quite nice, and it's quite filling as well. But anyway, guys, I am going to work my legs, and I'm going to show you some of the meals of the day. My post-workout shake, well, it's pretty much unchanged, but I'm gonna add, actually, some extras to it to recover better, so I'm gonna show you that, and I will do that right now. I just, oh, a few hours ago, I got home, had some food, and worked on 
getting the packages out to the postal office for VintageGenetics.com. I want to thank you guys for supporting Vintage Genetics and the Golden Era. Look at that. Kaboom. Anyway, I'm about to work out doing some legs, hamstrings. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to put in my shake, which I'm going to take to the gym to drink after the workout as a post-workout shake. So let's check it out. So what we have here is a shaker. Um, there's a nice handy tool on the bottom. Uh, they're pretty uh, widespread, also everybody knows them. I uh, used to put the powders on the bottom without the water, but sometimes it sticks. Because as you can see, here you can see some water running down. Because I just uh, washed this. And then when you put the powder on the bottom, for example, the creatine here, it'll stick at the bottom and you won't be able to shake it properly. So putting it in this container prevents that. All right guys, now I got this container set up and this is gonna be the most um, interesting ingredient actually. This is milk thistle. And that helps the liver detoxify your blood. And that's what you want after working out. Why would you want that? Because when you work out, your muscles contract, and when they contract and you work hard, you sweat, you build up toxins in your body, and that's actually a big part why you get muscle aches. That's why I like to do cardio after the workout to get the blood flowing through the body, through the muscles again, and after it, take the post-workout shake for your liver, that's why you add the milk thistle, to help your liver detoxify your blood. So what I add is about 500 milligrams to one gram. Uh, using this little spoon, you can use a teaspoon if you want, just measure it on a scale. One gram uh, is a little on the high side, but it will do the job. And then, and then we've got five grams of creatine that I will add. And here I've got a whey protein uh, professional Cytec sample of 30 grams of whey protein banana flavor. So I'm gonna put all of this in this container and then we are ready to go. Let's kill the hamstrings. Let's kill the hamstrings indeed because that is what we will be starting with on this leg day. As you guys may know, hamstrings are my personal weak point and actually a weak point for many people who seek to improve their legs. A lot of people, for example, when they say they have weak arms, it's not really the biceps they gotta work, it's the triceps. And for your legs, it's the hamstrings, basically. So the bigger your hamstrings are, which includes your inner thighs, the bigger your legs will appear. So we're starting out with a leg curl, a seated leg curl actually. We prefer to start out with a lying leg curl, but instead, because it wasn't available, we did the seated version. Now both versions are good, but the lying leg curl does have more hamstring activation and it's easier to fully contract and stretch the hamstrings in that particular position. But we did something in order to make this exercise heavier. It's going to be a heavy set. Boom! That's light. Too light. So yes, you can pick a heavy weight, but then even it sometimes is too heavy on this exercise. So what I decided to do is add a quarter rep at the bottom, taking out pretty much all the momentum because you can yank the weight down and contract the hamstrings once or keep it at that range at the bottom and actually contract it much, much harder because you take out the momentum. Take the momentum out of the movement. Okay. 
And another benefit of this is that you actually learn how to contract your hamstrings on your own in a much better way. The weight doesn't have to be as heavy and it's a safer way to perform the exercise. Trust me, try it out. You are used to doing the regular seated leg curl, but try it out with an extra quarter rep at the bottom and experience how much harder and heavier it feels. And what I like to do from time to time is when I fully pump up the hamstrings with an isolation movement, which is an exercise using only one joint, the knee joint. We worked only the hamstrings with the previous exercise. When that particular muscle is pumped up, I like to stretch it out with an exercise like this. And the benefit of that is that the more pumped up the muscle is, the stronger the stretch will feel. A lot of people have issues or problems doing this exercise, actually feeling the hamstrings and the glutes. Well, the hamstrings at least will be much easier to feel because they're pumped up. They're already a little sore. The lactic acid has built up already. So when you do this exercise, you will feel the stretch much faster and better than if you would have started out with this exercise. So the combination of a pump exercise and a stretch exercise is beneficial. More beneficial than doing both of them individually. And for hamstrings to really make them grow is not to do too many reps, but to actually go a little heavier than normal of course keeping the range of motion and the form in check but the hamstrings react very well under heavy loads under a lot of tension they don't want to grow if you do a lot of reps and light weights of course you have to combine the two you know the light weights and the many reps are to really pump up the muscle sometimes but you have to keep in mind that heavy loads is what makes the hamstrings grow the most. What I personally like to do is let the bar go down below my knees until I feel the stretch. Now for some people like my brother go a little deeper because they don't feel the stretch until they go as deep as this. It almost turns into a full deadlift but much more difficult because the legs aren't working it's just the hamstrings themselves and the lower back. But yeah, find the correct range of motion for you. So now that the hamstrings are pre-exhausted, we move on to the leg press. And my positioning with my legs is wider than usual because the wider your legs are positioned, just like on the squats, you target the inner side of your legs or your inner thighs, which is a big part of your hamstrings as well. Now, if you want your legs to look a lot bigger, it's the inner thighs that you gotta work. That's why I like doing wide stance squats and wide stance leg presses a lot. And sometimes when you start out with a combine movement, it is difficult to feel the actual leg muscle working. But when you pre-exhaust that particular muscle, in this case the hamstring, you will actually feel it contract and stretch a lot better than if you would have started out with the leg press. So when I go down, I feel my hamstrings with my hands to feel the contraction and to actually feel it working. And that way you will create a better mind-muscle connection. You should go pretty heavy on the leg press if it is possible for you to go at least parallel with your leg, so at least 90 degrees. Some people, like me, usually taller people, cannot go down 
further than 90 degrees without activating the lower back. And you want to keep the lower back out of this movement because it's a very heavy load and you don't want to strain the lower back and or the spine at all. You want to strain the legs only. And when Arnold Schwarzenegger's legs didn't want to grow in the past, all he had to do is add more sets to the squads and sets to the leg press and more weight. And when he did that, his legs most certainly grew. And now it is time for everyone's favorite exercise, the dumbbell lunges. Walking dumbbell lunges, guys. No one really likes this exercise apart from probably Ronnie Coleman and other people who are really strong in it. But it is a very balancing and delicate exercise because especially when you go heavy, it is difficult to find your balance. But that's exactly why it's a very good exercise. It doesn't just work the legs, but also the core, which you need for major lifts. Even the bench press, for example. The core is involved in almost every single lift. But that aside, the walking lunges, you can do it with a bar or dumbbells, doesn't really matter. They really work the separation in the quads and they work the hamstrings at the same time. And if you go deep enough, which is important, you work the glutes. So it's a full leg exercise. But depending on what you did before doing this exercise, you basically pick which muscle is worked most because in this case the hamstrings are already exhausted so you will feel the hamstrings before the quads and that's exactly what you want because in this workout we are focusing on the hamstrings And obviously, a workout isn't complete without some classic posing. That is mandatory for a true classic bodybuilder. Okay guys, listen up. If you want to work your calves, if you want to improve the size, increase the strength of your calves, listen up. Open your ears, move into the screen. Adjust the volume, heighten it, listen. Range of motion, range of motion is the most important aspect of training your calves. Combined with a certain weight. In this case, a heavy weight. I start out with a heavy weight on the standing calf raise but making sure that I go all the way down and especially Lee all the way up a lot of people go so heavy that they can go all the way down because that is not difficult gravity is doing that for you but going all the way up oh that's where the problem arises because that is not the power that is in your calf you have to go and adjust the weight to a lower setting if you want to be able to really work the calves at the point that it's actually responding to muscle growth. You walk all day so your calves are used to your own body weight and always to a certain range of motion. So you want to go beyond this, beyond in stress, in load on the muscle fibers, but especially beyond the range of motion that it is used to. That's why you cannot just do a, a standing calf raise on the floor because you can't go down low enough. It's a combination of the stretch and the contraction. And I like to end my leg workouts by doing some shrugs because my traps, well, they can't get bigger because is there a size limit to your traps? <laughs> Absolutely not. You cannot have big enough traps at all. You know, 
unless your chest is small, but I want an Arnold Schwarzenegger worthy chest. So they will both go hand in hand. And this is, well, I'm doing two more sets after this, but this is starting to become pretty heavy. As you can see, I'm starting to use uh, straps on the bar because you don't want to focus on the grip, but you want to focus on the contraction of the traps. Hey, what's up guys? I just got done working out, doing legs, as you just saw. Had my post-workout shake, and right now I'm having my post-workout meal, so let's show you what it is. So... This is my post-workout meal. Looks tasty, right? <laughs> anyway, this is a pan because I don't like to waste any bowls to use this. So just cook this in the pan and eat it straight out of it. Anyway, what is this? This is oatmeal with basically a mash of grains that you can basically cook in milk. But I use almond milk because it is very low in calories. About 400 mils of almond milk, 130 grams of oatmeal slash the mash of grains. And the green stuff is actually kale. 100 grams of frozen kale which I put in there until obviously it melts and dissolves into the mixture. And it's a little bit yellow because of the turmeric, turmeric which I add in powdered form. And then I add 30 grams of whey powder. You can either do a plant-based whey powder or a whey protein or a whey isolate, depending on what you uh, prefer. And then I add some peanut butter in the middle and every spoon will have a little bit of peanut butter in it for the fats. So this is the meal before my last meal and the last meal will have a lot more fats in it. I basically posted a picture of this on my Instagram before with the raisins in it as well. It's in there as, uh, actually, 25 grams of raisins, you know. It's a very nice addition, very nice tasting, carbohydrates for after the training, and healthy because it is a fruit, but it's dried. And yeah, but I showed this on my Instagram and I asked you what you guys thought it was. Some of you got it, got it close, but no one really got it 100% right because it doesn't really look like, uh, you know, a recognizable breakfast meal. Because I have this for breakfast as well, and I like having the same breakfast and the same post-workout meal because both meals need a high amount of carbs and a medium to low amount of fats and some protein, which this meal has as well. And I want to show you something. These are the chewable BCAAs I was talking about. And I've got some right here. This is the uh, pink grapefruit flavor. And I've also got this is one golden apple flavor. So let's see what it really is. Let's open it up. And boom. Here we go. Uh, it kind of looks like, you know, some form of candy or a mint. You know, but it actually is BCAAs. And the nice thing about it, I usually don't use this, but I got this at the uh, guest posing event last weekend and I just wanted to try it out. Now it tastes not really sweet, but it does have a nice taste to it so that you can actually eat it without uh, vomiting. Because the regular BCAA pills or the capsules, they might have a weird aftertaste sometimes when you swallow them. So the easy thing about this is that you can just eat them. And it has 1.5 grams of leucine and also isoleucine. And there was also some, let's see, valine, right. And that combination of amino acids causes the protein synthesis in the muscles to be elevated. Uh, you need at least three to four grams of leucine. So if you have a meal that doesn't contain enough protein, having two or three of these with your meal will actually elevate the protein synthesis uh, a lot more. But yeah, you can do it with uh, BCA capsules as well or a simple whey protein shake, whatever you prefer. But I thought it was a funny concept. Never thought that would, would be possible, but you know, it's a nice thing to try. Anyway, I'm gonna try and eat this post-workout meal, so 
See you soon. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think and what you want to see next. Obviously, a lot more videos will be uploaded. <laughs> the Ultimate Diet video is long overdue, so that one will come very soon. I'm going to do some vacuum videos, probably some posing videos, and a lot more is coming. Full days of eating, which people want to see, and I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing right now in terms of lean bulking, what my calories are, my macros, and what I'm eating nowadays, because I'm a little more flexible with my food choices, yet keeping them healthy. It's basically all about thinking logically. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching and thank you for supporting everybody, the Vintage Genetics channel, by either liking, subscribing, commenting, giving your feedback, which is very important. Your feedback is what drives this channel. And of course, by repping Vintage Genetics by buying the apparel or workout clothes. So thank you very much. And don't forget to stay golden. Oh, oh, oh.